this video I'm going to be showing you how to render videos in Sony Vegas. Now, if you're looking for specific settings for YouTube like high definition or high quality, click the annotations in the bottom left or the bottom right corner to be redirected to the appropriate video. This video is just going to show you the basics of rendering and go over a short discussion on uh, what each file extensions do and the pros and cons of each file type. So first of all, I'm going to drag something into my timeline here. I'm just going to drag this uh, media generator in. And let's just say that this is my final product that I want to export to YouTube or burn to a DVD or share through email or whatever. And I'm just ready. I'm all done. And I want to finish it up and uh, render it. So all you got to do is go to File, Render As. Now before we do that, let me go over a few other things that you might consider uh, to be the same thing. Uh, save and save as, uh, this is not rendering your video. Save and save as will save it as a project file, and the project file uh, allows you to open uh, the project in Sony Vegas up with all the tracks and everything so that you can edit the video later. So if you uh, try and upload a project file to uh, YouTube, it won't go through. This is just saving the project file. Render as is uh, what we're looking at, and this is basically uh, exporting the video in a file that can uh, be burnt to a DVD, shared through email, or uploaded to uh, video distri distributing sites or video hosting sites like Metacafe and YouTube. And uh, another one is Publish, and I have no clue what this does, but I think it just uh, uploads it to one website in specific, but uh, I know that it's not published. So what you're going to do is go to File, Render As, and here is our Render As dial dialog box. So First of all, just choose where you want to save it. I'll just save it to my desktop for now. Then you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call this uh, rendering test. And then you're going to choose a file type. So let me just uh, go over a quick overview of each and every single file type. I don't know all of them by heart or anything. I'll just go over the few main features. Uh, the, the file types that I would use for video and audio is uh, .mp4, .mpg, uh, .avi, .mov, and .wmv. And uh, let me go over what each one does. Now, uh, Windows Media Video V9, or .wmv, that stands for Windows Media Video, is uh, probably the best for online distribution on a Windows computer. It works good on smooth movement projects and stuff. Like my video tutorials, I'm not doing these crazy movements or anything. The only thing that really moves is my mouse and stuff, so that's why I use WMV. Another pro about WMVs is that they uh, compress your files into a really, really small file size. Even on a high definition video clip, WMV will compress it to a really small file size, which is appropriate for uploading it to a video hosting site. Now the next one is video for Windows.avi. AVI stands for Audio Video Interleave, and this is basically, you know, just the basic video clip. Uh, these produce very high file sizes, but you'll get really good quality. And I don't know if this happens with everyone, but I've noticed that when I render videos in a .avi format, um, the, it, the video gets darker than it should have been, so if you're going to render it as a, a .avi, I, I highly suggest uh, adding a brightness and contrast filter. I have an entire video on this too, that so you can check that out as well. So uh, I don't really use .avi too much, it's like an alternative, but I don't really use it too much, especially not in comparison to WMV. Now uh, QuickTime 7, or .mov, uh, I do not know what that stands for, but it's uh, basically the equivalent to Windows Media Video except on a Mac. Um, I think this QuickTime 7 is uh, s suitable for online viewing as well, like if we go over here it actually has like settings for online viewing, like prepare for streaming, optimization, fast start, which seems appropriate, but what, from what I've uh, experienced, MOV files produce uh, extremely large file sizes, and I don't really like using them too much. It's more better on like a Mac or something. And um, dot .mpg, I, correct me if I'm wrong, this stands for Motion Picture Experts Group. Uh, I don't know, I can't confirm that. I'm pretty sure that's what it stands for. And again, this is kind of like EVI. I think you have a few more options here, like video and audio. You can choose all the codecs. Uh, you can have a variable bit rate or a constant bit rate. I usually have a constant bit rate. You can adjust all the quality and stuff and use all these different codecs and everything. So uh, I'd rather use a .mpg over .avi, but what I would rather use over .mpg and .avi put together is a .mp4. There's two .mp4 files in this list. 
There's main concept AVC slash AAC dot MP4, and then there's also Sony AVC dot MP4 dot M2 TS and dot AVC. But the one I like to use is main concept AVC slash AAC dot MP4, and this is uh, like what I prefer to use over dot AVI files and dot um, uh, MPG. So my personal preference, uh, it's all different for you guys, uh, whatever suits you is fine. My top three favorite video formats is .wmv, .mp4, and then .mpg. So, but anyways, you'd basically choose, I'm just going to choose .mp4. Then it's a good idea to choose one of the templates down here by going to templates and choose one. Uh, for mp4, there's not that many, but you can create your own. So you can have 320 by 240 for Apple iPod or 640 by 480. I'm just going to choose this one. Then we can also go to this custom button and configure the options. I always have video rendering quality at best. And it, do it doesn't matter on the frame size. Uh, if you're on YouTube, I recommend either 640 by 480 for high quality or 1280 by 720 for high definition. If you're looking for widescreen, 1280 by 720 will also do. But uh, if you're on looking for high quality widescreen, I'd recommend 1024 by 576. I usually have uh, this profile is at baseline. Frame rate is always at 30 for me, unless you're in the PAL region or whatever. Uh, pixel aspect ratio should always be at 1, and I always use a constant bitrate, never a variable bitrate, but it's always up to you. And my constant bitrate, if I'm looking for high quality but relatively low file size, I'll stick between 4 and 10 million. And for audio, I always have the sample rate at uh, 44,100 hertz, and then the bitrate is usually at 128. But it's all different depending on what you're doing. Like for DVD and uh, email, you might want a higher quality audio, but YouTube recommends 44,000 hertz and 128 kilobits or 28, 128,000 bits. So uh, it's all different. But th those are basically a little uh, the settings that I use in a nutshell. But that's basically it for rendering. So you choose where you want to save it. You choose the name, choose the format, and choose the template, and you hit save. And uh, there you go, you're rendering a video. And then uh, once it's at 100%, you'd uh, go to the location and you could uh, open it in Windows Media Player or LimeWire or whatever. Or you could upload it to YouTube or Metacafe or, you know, Mega Upload. Or you could uh, send it to your friends through email. You could upload it to, like, the Pirate Bay. Uh, you could burn it to a DVD or Blu ray. It doesn't matter, it's all up to you. But you now have a finished uh, file. That is a video clip that is uh, can do a variety of things for you. So basically, that's the basics of rendering a video. For more in-depth instructions for rendering specific file types, check out my other tutorials. I have uh, two video or I have three videos, two on HD and one on high quality. So you might want to check those out as well to go a little more in-depth with rendering. But that's basically it. Thanks for watching. For more tutorials like this, check out my YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for watching. I already said that, but. Whatever, I uh, hope you learned about rendering, and take care.